Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Another week on 25th of September, and you're on live 360. And Mr. McFarr is planning on coming. Anyway, I'll start off. Uh, I, I just got done telling these guys that I have never talked so much in my life as I have for the last three days. But um, doing a lot of clips to people. Uh, if you go to Heroes, if you get a chance, many, many uh, good speakers. Uh, Red did a fantastic job. I got a lot of, I've got an AI tool that breaks them all down. And when I'm breaking them down, I get to hear them again and really listen. And I'm telling you, we're all human. And you might listen. Sometimes you get time, you might want to listen again. Because you pick up something else that you didn't realize. And that's how we all learn. Because we're all at this at a different different stage or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of the emphasis that uh, myself and Chris were doing on, on our live, besides doing Shine the Light, and we've got a lot of people that came in, uh, shout out to, uh, well, to the deaf people because they really turned out. Mexico, Japan, Germany, United States, Canada, unbelievable. They're doing a great job. Um and, and we're playing those. Anything under three minutes, we uh, play them on our live now. Because you could do one or two a, a, a day. Uh, but they're being done. There's there's still some in, in line to, to come out. Uh, as I tell everybody, uh, go, to, go to your, wherever YouTube channel you go to, subscribe and ring the bell. And when you're on a video, click it. Here's what I want to say again. And this goes for Red and Chris. They can add to it if they want. When you support the channel that you go to, whether it's mine, Red, Chris, I don't care who it is. If you go to the channel, you do the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell. Here's here's why my opinion. Right now, we have X amount of subscribers. For me, they're, most of them are founders, without a doubt. Same for all of you. But the new chapter's coming. We're going to move to the world. And the world's going to come in, and they will relate to someone, maybe did a shine the light, maybe there was a, a, a small portion taken out, or they heard somebody and they say, oh, I can relate to him or I can relate to her. The videos we're doing, many of them, on all our channels, I know for a fact, are other people. Okay, it's other people. So when they come, first thing they do is they hear about on passive, they go to YouTube because YouTube has really become a search engine. Uh, it has for me. If I'm looking up something, I go to YouTube, not Google. Not always. If I want an image, I go to Google. But if I'm looking for content, I'll, pump, I'll punch it in on YouTube. Same thing will happen now. Right now, if you want to start a YouTube channel to build, to get ready for us to move to the next chapter, it's going to take you a while. It doesn't happen overnight. It, take, it takes a while. And the only reason our channel is built bigger is we started earlier, and it's founders, okay? So if we take the responsibility to share your content, then you're going to ride the wave with us. Yeah, we're going to do well, but you're going to ride with us. It's one more impact to your business that you may not be thinking of. So go ahead and do a like, go ahead and do a share. If your video comes out uh, and you want to put it on your own channel, go ahead. But in the meantime, support the channel now so that when when they punch in on, uh, on passive, uh, what is on passive or whatever, whatever, it's going to go to the channels that are already established. So I would hate for people that maybe they have a really, really small channel. It has nothing to do with your content. You might be great. I'm, there's a lot of people speak better than me, but they're gonna go to the channels bigger. And obviously some of ours are bigger. We've been doing it a long time. And when they do that, then they can find different people. Just a thought, it's one more avenue or tool that can uh, help everyone out. Uh, I have changed uh, my thoughts about where where I want to go later down the road. And I think 
because um, the family that we have built, it's very important that uh, we look out for each other. There's people that are really good at something. I'll give an example. And this is one I brought up the other day. I was making a banner for heroes. I got done with it. I looked at it and I went, that's ugly. It's okay, but I don't like it. So I said, oh, I'll go, I go see Tim Johnson. Now, Tim's not the only one. So a lot of people that do really, really good ones. Tim's the one I knew off hand. Nobody's better. I went to him, didn't give him a heads up, didn't do not. Tim, can you make me a banner? Of course, I do everything late. You guys know that. I don't need anybody to say, yeah, I know you suck. I get it, okay? But he did the banner probably an hour later. It was done. And it was perfect. I mean, amazing. He has a skill. But he can do something that well. That's why I say, some people are better speakers. Some people do better content. Some people write better. Like I would do, um, oh, she has to go get shorty. Um, so like when I used to do autoresponders, I would write it, but it was ne never as good as me talking. So. I teamed up with Dan Street, and Dan could write beautifully. And it made all the difference in the world. Team up with people, trust one another. Everybody's different. Everybody could have their own lane. I know many times when I talk to people, yeah, but I can't do that. Never start a sentence with I can't. Start a sentence with I can, because you can do something very good that maybe you don't know yet. But step outside the box. I brought this up over the weekend. People say, I don't like to step outside the box. They, of course, nobody does. That's why it's called outside the box. But if you do it, the next time will be not quite as hard. If you do it again, not quite as hard. And then one day, you'll get a rush from it. You actually, it feels good to do it. I I didn't feel real good about certain things I did. But the more I do it, now it it. It made me, it, you grow internally, mentally, and you could do that. And what the, the reason I'm saying that is the day will come because you took this journey. I'm talking to everybody. I don't care what country you're from, that when it goes to the next page, the next phase, and really starts to grow, not like anything we've ever seen now, uh, you're going to have people to approach you. Aren't you the guy that was in a, that company? Yeah, yeah. What's it about? Know your business. You don't have to be an expert. Remember, everybody worries like, oh, I'm going to be judged. What you don't know, they don't know it. Like somebody told me, I don't want to talk about my life. I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. You were seven. I don't know if you made a mistake or not, or when you were 10 or 13. Nobody's perfect. As soon as you realize that you're good enough, you can do it. Let go of that, because most people don't care. I'm not judging you on what you did or how you said it, but I, I'm telling you, if you step out of your comfort zone, I know people want to look to somebody else. There's nothing wrong with guidance, but I think people need to uh, take the ride of a lifetime. It's not only financial, it's growing. It's being somebody, being 100% of you, not somebody else. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going because I could, I'm going to turn it over to Red. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marty. And hello, Chris. Uh, if I hear, if you hear me a little bit echoey, it's because we're in a different location and very high ceilings. But I'm sure the audio is clear, just a bit echoey. But anyway, uh, good to see you, brothers. Nice always to be here on 360. Uh, Chris, man, you look absolutely dapper. There, good word. You do look dapper. With your you're looking, coat. You're looking very jacket. pretty pretty yourself there, Red. I brought my girls, oh. as you can see. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on from being pretty, eh, Chris? So, guys, uh, obviously, uh, 
I've been talking over the last uh, week or so about um, staying the course and uh, seeing this through to the end because you deserve it. Uh, you spent invested a whole lot of time and effort into this business and you want to see it through. I want to change things slightly. And it was one of the questions that I asked our CEO, Ash Mufaro, when he was in the chair with us was, where do you see yourself uh, in a year's time? Now, I'm going to say this to all of you now, where do you see yourselves in five years time? And why it is an important question uh, to put out there. Now, interviewers or interviewees, should I say, use this a lot when uh, new people are going for jobs and they always throw this question in is, where do you see yourself in five years time? So why do they use that question? And it really is uh, to inquire about your future plans and the new interviewers uh, seek an insight into your commitment to the role of their organization, understanding where you see yourself in the five years, helps them assess if you're likely to stay with the company, uh, obviously ensuring that your career goals align with their opportunity that they can provide. So why am I bringing this up now as far as you individually are concerned and on passive? I really do believe that having a plan for yourself, a one-year plan, three-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, or however long it is, is really, really important to give yourself goals and guidelines along that journey. Now, obviously, many of us have been involved with On Passive through the journey over the last six years to where we are today. And we really haven't had a plan as far as where we want to take this business because we haven't got to the stage yet where the business is open and we can utilize all of the benefits and leverage what on passive is going to do this is why i really want all of us to start thinking now about our five year plan now if you remember when i asked ash this question he actually quite frankly said you can't have a one year plan in fact you can't even have a two year plan because it's too much of a close amount of time to really build on something that you want to grow. Now on passive, is it going to be a business? At the end of the day, it's your business and it's how you utilize the platform of on passive for the benefit of your own business. We've heard Marty talking today about how he's looking and had to rethink his plan. Now there's nothing wrong with changing a plan at all. But the important part is to have a plan. Why? Because this is what is driving you forwards to do the things that you are doing. If you just get up in the morning and you have no plan, then things go by the wayside. You're not putting all the effort into it that you should be putting into it because you really haven't got a plan. This is why to have a proper plan two years, three years, five years, whatever it is, gives you that focal point to get to where you want. You know the old saying, reach for the stars, you might hit the moon. If you've got no plan to get to somewhere, you're not going to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Now, am I saying that you're going to get it right if you've got a plan? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is it certainly does give you a focal point on where you want your business to go. Now, we all have different plans, don't we? We all have different focuses. Some of us might be completely financial. Some of us might be a plan to help other people. Some of us might be having plans for our family, people around us and all the rest of it. Whatever it is, it's still a plan. And that's what I love about being able to focus on whatever your plan is. It's very specific to you and it is entirely up to you what that plan is. We're not interviewers. On Passive isn't interviewing you for your future. What we're saying it to you is here is everything that you need to be successful online. Everything. If you can think it, it is going to be there for the benefit of you to utilize 
in your online business called on passive it is up to you to plan to make sure that you utilize as many of those components as you possibly can to benefit your business and i need to keep reiterating this that on passive and your position that you have as an affiliate in on passive is your business is the company a business of course it is but it's also a platform where you can utilize the products and services for the benefit of your business. That's, at the end of the day, why it was produced. That is why it is put together for the marketeers, for the people who want to sell, for the people who need a website, a domain name that want to give. All of these components are there in one place because people need them. It is up to you to have your plan of how you're going to utilize them for the benefit of your business. Do you want to be big? Do you want to be small? Do you want to be average? Do you want to just tick along? Whatever it may be, it can be facilitated through the platform of OnPassive. And this is why I go back to saying is, what is your five-year plan? Back to you, Chris. Very good, ready. I'm ready. The <clears throat> red, I always got that pretty mixed up again. Marty, excellent. I love you guys both. It's really nice seeing you again. I see red's got a rosy, nice tan going. Lucky you. I'm fading, but that's okay. And Marty's got that just that good looking face all the time. So mm -hmm. there it is. Uh, let me start off by saying <clears throat> some prayers for some of our founders. I don't know if I got them all. I really try sometimes. I I try to write them down and I mess up sometimes, but uh, please keep all these individuals in your prayers. Of course, you know about Robin Noble. Um, lots of prayers for her. And Dane and Darius, uh, they contact me this week and they're now both fighting cancer. So put them in your prayers, please. Uh, Caesar Chacon's father um, is, is not doing real great right now. He's going to need a lot of prayers. Uh, Jerry Nix, I think he had a, a valve replaced in his heart, or he's getting one. Julie Pierre's daughter, Chloe, with the brain tumor. Daryl Cook's brother also is kind of in the same position that uh, Caesar's dad's in, uh, in the hospital. Say lots of prayers, guys. Strength for their family. Cindy Hopkins has been in and out of the hospital. Uh, Regina Baker, the lady that was hit by a car. Uh, Rob Gorman uh, from Robin Lynn is uh, still fighting some illnesses. Say some prayers for him. Uh, absolutely pray for my brother, Red, and my brother, Marty's family, Ashma Fire's family. And uh, a real nice one because Seeds Academy uh, is still growing because of all of you. Uh, I would like to say a prayer for uh, William and, and all those kids and all those educators out there. You're doing a heck of a job. I want to thank everyone who continues to give. I know he's looking for more deaths. So if you want to reach out, to me or to William, uh, we're gonna help him out a little bit more. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I watched some interesting movies because I've been under the weather, took a couple days off here. And I talked about the, the movie I watched the other day, The World's Fastest Indian, a true story. Uh, I think Marty's halfway through it, he's loving it. And there was some key things that he said in there that I talked about the other day. I'm not gonna repeat them. You're gonna go back and watch the live if you wanna watch. But there was one thing that he brought out that I really loved. And he was quoting Theodore Roosevelt. I believe he was our 26th president. If I'm wrong, you know, call my lawyer. Uh, <laughs> he said, it's not the critic that counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the, the doer of deeds could have done better. We all know what a critic is, right? The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat, who strikes valiantly, who errs and may fall again and again because there is no effort without error or show or shortcomings. Uh, boy, that's when I heard that, I really it really made sense to me. Maybe I, I'll explain a little different. You know, uh, Remember, we used to have the movie critics. I can't remember their names. I used to watch them all the time. And they would tell you what they thought the movie was good, bad. And then I'd end up going seeing the movie and what they said was bad. I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I think 
a lot of critics today don't really realize because they got an easy job. Anyone can be a critic. It's the easiest job in the world because they can get on there and say whatever they want, whether they're wrong, whether they're right, but it's easy. Uh, and critics throughout the world have judged the greatest leaders in the world from the beginning of the time, uh, we'll say Jesus Christ, all the way till now. And uh, most of them don't realize that these individuals are striving to make their lives better, to push forward, uh, to better humanity, to make things easier for people in life, are down in the trenches every day, literally sweating, fighting things, battling things, spending ungodly amounts of money to make their dreams happen, to get this going. Uh, we have a lot of critics in this world. Uh, and a lot of them right now have shot at all of us, I think. Most, uh, most, most Ash Mafara, and I give him a lot of credit for keep going and going and going. Uh, one thing that I will say that I don't believe Ash Mafara has ever failed. I know that says that in a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. I don't think he's ever failed because he's never given up. And uh, every time he hits a wall, and some of these walls are pretty high, he seems to find a way to go through that wall like a magician and keep on moving. Lots of respect that I have for anyone who keeps going to make their lives better. But when I look at Ash Mafara, he's not doing it for himself. He's doing it for the world. He's doing it to change humanity. Here comes my crazy dog again. Uh, I think that uh, we all should be counting our blessings that we have an individual like this who fights for us on a daily basis. Uh, and I love that about him. And I wrote a couple other quotes from Theodore Roosevelt down that I really liked. And if you look at the history of every leader in the world, a lot of them, can you please get down? A lot of them <laughs> have say, pretty much say the same thing. Do what you can until what you have done where you are. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Okay? Yeah, I know. My dog's beautiful. That's enough. Uh, spread love everywhere you go. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. We've heard that a million times. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. We've heard that a, a million times. Do one thing every day that scares you. Well, to me, that's new. I think ever since that lady wrote that song. And it's a great song. And I thought about that for a minute. Do something every day that scares you. Well, I'm going to be honest. I cannot stand roller coasters. They scare the living daylights on me. But I wrote it. I wrote it. I'll never write it again, but I did it once. But they do scare me. Uh, that's, I think what they're saying is challenge yourself. In other words, if you come up with an idea or, or a solution to something, and if you're afraid to go out and tell someone or actually do it because what a critic might say, well, then you're letting that critic steal your dream uh, and you're letting them put fear in your heart. Don't ever be afraid to try anything. Uh, and what a, what a most, I would say, every great leader that I've ever seen in my life say, you got to fail. You got to keep failing until you get it right. That's part of the process of uh, starting anything. Nothing starts perfectly. Uh, I, I think every company, every great leader in the world has said, oh, my God, we had so many failures. Oh, I did so many things wrong. I should have rethink, rethought it. But see, they never would have known until they took that journey of what they really wanted to accomplish in life. Uh, hold on. I spilled Red's tea all over my notes today. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Okay? Let me say that again because it's important. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. All right? Who do you want to be? I'm going to tell you this, and passive is going to give us all that option to be who we really want to be. Uh, maybe a lot of us don't have the, uh, and I'm including myself, maybe the knowledge or the finances to go out and do what we really want to do. But I think with Ash Mafara as, as our CEO and leader and consultant, I call him, 
because I do consult things with him and uh, ask his opinion because I respect him that much because of his wisdom. Uh, it's a great thing. Not only do we have a CEO who talks to us, we have a CEO that cares about us, but he's going to give you advice. He comes on these webinars, he gives us advice, or you never really see him angry or mad. Even in his worst times, he didn't show anger. Uh, that's a big, big part of being a leader. Uh, showing people anger instead of calmness and, 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 and collectiveness to get out there and do what's right, no matter who threw the rock at you, and just keep going. Let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are. You've heard us a million times again say on here, we want to know who you are. We, we don't want you to be Red Redford or this crazy cat here, Chris Johnson or Marty DeGarmo. We want you to be you. Unpassive is allowing you, as far as I'm concerned, to be you. Because there's nothing tying you down uh, when you are a business owner of Unpassive. Things are being so uh, accomplished for you. You, you. What do we used to say? Uh, I think Red used to say, a business in a box. All right? You're being handed a business in a box. But this isn't just any old business. It's a business that's going to turn heads. It's going to change the way we educate people. It's going to change the way businesses think. And it's going to rewrite history on how maybe it should have been done a long time ago. Uh, Ash Mafara, I'm going to be your critic right now. I think everything that you're doing is amazing. I think you have a lot of people. Matter of fact, I know you have a lot of people who support you 100%. Yeah, we got a few people that might say, well, I don't know. And that's okay. That's like, that's a human being. It's natural. But the way I look at it is I wake up every morning. I thank the good Lord for letting me waking up. And I'm thinking, wow, I have this that's coming my way. I have something that's going to help my family, my kids, my grandkids, and beyond. Legacy, dreams, everything that we've all dreamed about. Every one of you, I guarantee you on a Monday morning when you're going to work, you're saying, oh, my God, I don't really want to go to work today. But you know you have to. Part of life. It was part of the normal life. I think I'm passive has changed normal to uh, greatness, uniqueness. And, of course, people, when they hear it, they think that's impossible. I'm here to tell you it's not impossible. I got Marty read on here, wherever Marty went, always talking about the same thing. Plus, we got a 500,000 other people talking about the same thing. Why? Because they want a better life. We don't care what the critics say. All right. I care about the man in the, in the arena who's working hard for everyone. I care about that guy that's got the red thing and he's got a bowl coming at him every day. That man has done miracles for all of us yet. Maybe you have not seen them yet, but you will. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> I could say a million things about this, but uh, I think for me, it's, it's, it's a proud and honorable position to be in, which every one of you hold that position. All right. I'm just one of these loudspeakers, I call us. Uh, I hold a position because I talk about something that I have so much belief in it that it hurts sometimes. All right. It hurts to know that people for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, 80 years have struggled uh, through loss of jobs, through horrible jobs, through no jobs. And uh, when I think back about that, I'm more grateful every single day for what Ash Mafara has accomplished for all of us. Uh, nothing's perfect. No one ever will be perfect. Uh, I myself am not perfect. Red's pretty, but he's not perfect either. <laughs> and he will get me later for that. But I'm happy to say this, that we're still here for a reason. Um, Ash Mafara is still here for a reason. There's nothing that's going to stop him from doing what he's doing. There's nothing that's going to stop me, I believe, Red, Marty, from doing what we're doing. And all the other people that are out there that are, uh, we're not pushing it, we're sharing it. And we don't care about the critics. We care about uh, doing what's right. I think that's what a passive stand is we're built on, doing what's right. 
removing the evil from this world, removing the corruption. Uh, I think we see it every day. Just turn on your news channel. We want to help people all over the world in every part of the world. We want to keep doing this. I want to keep doing this until I die. Truth. I want to see people from all over the world that succeeded where they never could succeed before. And that's the amazing part. And a lot of people said, you know, they they call me a little crazy. That's okay. Uh, being crazy is not a bad thing. Some of the greatest leaders in the world were crazy. And why were they called crazy? Because they had an idea they thought wasn't and wasn't possible. I think uh, men and women of this world that have created things have impressed a lot of people. Like there's how many times have we said, there's no way that's going to happen. They said that about the moon. There's no way we're going to get a man on the moon. There's no way we're ever going to get to Mars. Well, I got news for you. I don't believe anything's impossible. I think the possibilities are there with people like Ash Mafara, who have the mind and the sense to study things, to observe things, and change things for the entire world, uh, not just for his family. Big shout out, shout out to his wife and his kids. I will say this at least twice a week uh, for the sacrifice they made to share their their dad and their husband with, with us. Uh, you don't know it, but he does spend a lot of time away from his family working this business to get it right. And uh, I am I came from that kind of where I did work a lot. I was away from my family a lot because of work, and it's no fun. But his purpose is a lot bigger than mine was just to get into a pension or, th or that end of that 30 years. Uh, his purpose is to change things that he's seen wrong for so many years. Um, he will get knocked down for what he's saying and what he's doing, but that's okay. Because they said the same thing about every single, single big thing this in this world that's happened. The wheel. I back back then there was probably a caveman said, Oh, you crazy wheel. What's a wheel? Listen, it started from somewhere. There's been inventions upon inventions. Business is about a business. Then we get into technology. If you would have told me 20 years ago that I'd be talking on a webinar right now and to the entire world, I would have thought you're crazy. If you'd have told me that I'd be able to talk to Red Red for halfway around the world on my cell phone, I would have thought you're crazy. Many people thought people were crazy for coming up with stuff. like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk. You know, I'm just naming a couple that put things in place that we all enjoy. Uh, Fords, Chrysler, GM, they put four wheels under all of us. They put beautiful vehicles under all of us. Why? Because they had a dream. They had an idea and they were knocked down for it and they were pushed around for it, but it didn't stop them from doing what they did. I'm thankful for the crazy people that want to come out and do something great. So Red... I don't know where Marty went. If you sent you a note, I wasn't looking. Yeah. I'm going to hand it back to you because I need a drink of water. No problem, my friend. Yeah, Marty's just had to uh, slide off for five minutes or so. He's going to try his very best to be back. It's a bit of a family emergency. So uh, myself and Chris are here holding the fort until our CEO, Ashmu Farah, comes on. Actually, I wanted to uh, pick up on what um, Chris is saying there, really about why are we doing this? You know, why are we still very vocal, very active uh, within the on passive community? And it's not just us three, by the way. Uh, it's uh, many, many, many of you. And actually, the amount of people who are stepping up to the mark to be more vocal is increasing, not decreasing. Now, I'm sure you have all had your fair shares of why you're still doing it. Why are you still believing it? Why are you still active in it? Uh, can't you see this? And it's obviously that. And we've heard it all before. So I'm going to tell you my reason. And the reason I am still as active over the six years on within on passive is because I've got belief and faith, not only in our CEO, but more importantly, of what is going to be happening now chris was talking about 
crazy people inventing crazy stuff. And if it wasn't for the crazy people, then some of these things would never happen. I'm going to give you one example. Now, when I was a kid, and you guys uh, probably used to have this as well, uh, Star Trek was on, wasn't it? You know, I can remember as a kid, Star Trek, you know, the old beam me up Scotty. Remember that one? You know, we had that thing, beam me up Scotty, right? And it was all very sci-fi-y and it was all very uh, 1970s. Now, I could remember as a kid thinking, wow, wouldn't it be so cool if we could have something like that in the future? Guess what? We've got that and more than what we saw on the TV. The only thing that you can't do is teleport somebody. But the talking into a cell phone to another area, sending pictures, looking at their face on a screen, we've got all that. Now, it makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? Did they know back then that that was going to be around? And I always feel that a little bit about movies, TVs, and all the rest of it, is they kind of drip feed us a little bit of stuff that's coming in the future so we don't freak out when it happens. We get almost used to it. But without these people who have got this vision of what is going to happen in the future, guess what? We won't move forward. We won't evolve as a human race. We will become very stagnant and actually maybe regress and go backwards. Places have done that. When they take their foot off the gas, so to speak, and don't keep moving forward. With on passive, and especially my journey, I believe on what is happening here. Ash said once, didn't he? We've all got that feeling about on passive. We've got that feeling that something's going on here, something a little bit different that's out of the norm that we don't see. Some of us get it, an awful lot don't. And that's why an awful lot of people say to all of us, Red, what are you doing? You've been at it six years and what? why are you still doing it? I'm doing it because I believe in what we are trying to achieve. I believe that we really are trying to defy what is that business mold, to change things for the better, to allow everybody to have a fair shot of being able to make their way online without getting ripped off, without costing them a fortune, have a safe haven that they can park their bus knowing full well that nobody is going to rip them off. Now, that's a rarity, isn't it? How many of you have, in one way, shape or form, had something taken from you online, whether it be cloning your bank card, whether it be a scam, whether it be investing in something. The list is endless, but I can bet you that there is more than 50% of the people who are watching this right now who have lost or had something taken from them because of being online, whether it be banking, whether it be investments or whatever it may be. This is why on passive is here to change those normals. And it is a normality, isn't it now? Any business online has a certain amount or certain percentage that they put to one side to actually pay. Jane uses Vinted online, buying and selling secondhand clothes, all the rest of it. This is how she makes a little bit of pocket money on the side. Guess what? They have an insurance with that because it happens so often whether it doesn't get posted, gets stolen on in traffic or uh, en route or whatever it is, that they have to put a little bit of insurance in there for that effect because it happens so often. And unfortunately, this is the norm of what happens online. Along comes on passive to change all that, to have that safe haven. How is it going to be achieved? Guess what? Every single person who's going to be within on passive, the ecosystem, is going to be verified for number one. A real legitimate person, not a 
makey fakey that you might think is your best mate who's selling a load of lies about you and you get all upset, but actually it's not them. How many times do you see on Facebook them saying, ignore any messages from me, I've been hacked. If you have a friend request from me, it's because I've been hacked. That ain't going to happen in non-passive. Why? Because we're going to make sure every single person who is within the ecosystem is a verified, real, legitimate person, not hiding behind a fake name, hiding behind a fake face. They're going to be real people. This is why I'm still excited about on passive. This is why I'm still vocal about on passive because I believe in the journey and I believe what is happening here. Right, Chris, I'm going to end it back to you. You can introduce our CEO. Okay. Uh, I know Marty should be my Ash, Ash brother. Marty's off for a little bit. He's got a little issue. I'm sure he'll be back. It's nice to see you. Thank you for coming. I know you just got out of a meeting, brother. Uh, we love you, man. It's Thank all you. you. It's all you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate the appreciate the uh, professionalism here. Uh, <laughs> the groom, Charles Osong here. Oh, that's not. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> and yeah, of course, DeGarmo has many issues. Uh, <laughs> not just one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope you're doing good. I apologize. I wanted to come sooner, but the reason is because um, I was uh, uh, taking time to get uh, some more details. And uh, I was actually uh, in the system. We're logging in. Uh, delivered before the time. So last time we talked, we talked about uh, a possibility of uh, us having a link and we're able to log in the system and go live. That has been achieved. I am actually, I have uh, a copy open on my uh, machine here and it is uh, better than I thought. So a couple of things are way better today than uh, before. Uh, let me update you. The first thing, and I want to say the overall betterment, and then we're going to say, uh, talk about the mechanical uh, betterment. So overall, today, not only we're on the right track, we're in a much better position strategically than we were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months ago. Today, we are in the perfect position that I wanted to be years ago. And that position is to have the right talent to help us reach our goal sooner, effectively, more efficient, and uh, in the safest possible way. That was the dilemma previously. As of now, the best part is we have the talent. And I want to focus and underline the word talent better than experience. Somebody could have 30 years experience of just flipping tacos or burger, whatever, right? Doesn't impress me. You're doing the same thing. You're you're uncreative. You're not creative for 30 years. You should have reached a new level in the taco industry. Uh, but to have the right caliber, the character, the honesty, the integrity, the talent, creativity, that is a rare combination. People that get it quickly, uh, seamless progress, right on time. In fact, a couple of uh, occasions before time, ahead of time. That's how I get this level of confidence. And this is why I'm really uh, looking forward to what's coming, the future, and share that with you. So the level of talent that we have is something really better than my dream, really. 
So I, I really want you to rest assured we've got the talent to take us where we want to go much faster than we thought before. Now things are making sense. All right. So the other thing is not only the overall position we're in a in 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 a perfect spot today than the last year or so. Not only that, but also because we have this new setup, we're confident that we're able to go to a higher ground than we previously thought we could achieve in Unpasso. That give us the motivation, it give us the uh, excitement that yes, now whatever we throw on at the table, then we're able to make it happen seamlessly. So it's really like a dream come true. That's that's the bottom line. In conclusion, not just failure is not an option. I can tell you, we got it. We absolutely got it. And that's it. There's no mystery. There's not a question like, are we able to recover, to give back the data, this, this, that, okay? That's done. As of today, I can confirm with you, we have recovered the business. We're not going away, we're coming back, but not just back. All right, we're coming much stronger with the right people, with the right caliber, with the right uh, integrity, with the right talent again. So all in all, we're, I think, better direction, better position, and aiming to enormous success that lies ahead. Now, I'm saying this not because of what I heard or the promise, which previously I got ahead of myself, okay? It's a confession based on what I heard. I take it as like people mean what they say. Apparently not all the time. So what happened is now I'm seeing it. And in fact, the, the conversation previous to this, right ahead of this, it was, do you realize the effort that was done with the minimal resources and the time? We were just like really exchanging how speechless we are it's like hard to believe but that give us like seeing the screen seeing the accomplishment the quality the seamless uh, aspect of it so that's what uh what i wanted to share with you okay so uh what's next that's that's what matters right uh as of tomorrow so what I told you last week, it's all done, right on time. What I told you the previous weeks, I will address it now, uh, or maybe a couple of weeks ago. So is it a matter that we are coming back? You're going to have the login to go to check your account live again, 100%, just a matter of days, okay? So which scenario? I said, the scenario that is right around the corner, okay? So this is not something I'm told. This is something I'm seeing. I'm sure you understand there has been a change in my uh, uh, method, you know, to, to communicate with you. I, I'm not gonna open my mouth until I see the facts. Not gonna do it again. So that's that's what happened. So what I told you about the different scenarios, those are done, you know. So it doesn't matter. It's not three months. It's not, you know, uh, you know, questionable a matter of like, are we able to recover everything or no? No, it's absolutely uh, in hand. We got it. 
that's not a question anymore. It's not a question which scenario. The scenario now, just, you know, the coming days. Okay? Don't take that because tomorrow, this is what's next. Tomorrow, we're going to have this X time. Estimate it. I might not necessarily change it, like share it with you for obvious reasons. We want to get closer to the accomplishment point, to the finish line, so that we can be more accurate. All right? Uh, or we could decide to give you a range. That's A, timeline. B, which is more important. Is Digarmo okay? Uh, joking aside now, is he okay? Like, uh, he's just having... Shorty. 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 JJ's okay. having no issues. Oh, God. Okay. I hope everything will be okay. Um, so, uh, we'll see uh, if we can connect with him. Now, uh, as she is on here, I'm sure he's listening. Okay. Yeah, we're we're uh, going to try to connect with him. Because of B. Uh, B, uh, we're going to have to see the time that we go to the next phase of unpassive. That's another uh, formula we are uh, figuring out. I, I hope things will be fine, brother. Don't worry, okay? We're with you. Can send you an army. Uh, but we're going to decide how long or based on how long would it take us to go to the next phase of unpassive if you're paying attention you know what that means okay if it's manageable and and then I will kind of like explain to you what the next phase is of unpassable. For the first time today, I will share with you. If it's a reasonable time frame, then we're not going to do much in unpassive as is. Take it as a view period, as a, a bridge, a funnel to go to the next phase, but internally and professionally. And formally, okay, because we have to communicate through the back office and your subscription, whether it's free, paid, unpaid, doesn't matter. Founder, affiliate, customer. So if that time, it, again, reasonable, acceptable, we'll assess that, then we move, uh, we start working on giving you more details about the next phase and timelines and all of that, right? So you can expect it. It's really a new chapter, all right? A better chapter. The best chapter, if you wish. Now, when we figure out tomorrow if it's going to be, say, more than a couple of months, all right, which is okay, then we can discuss a final trial with unpassive as is, all right, like a, like a wrap up. So we basically have those two scenarios. So we are going to know more and you know, all those details tomorrow. And if we feel it's reasonable, the next time we meet, we can talk to you about the timeline and which scenario we're going to go for. And expect within that time frame, you would be able to uh, at least go to the login point. All right, then we will communicate through the back office. So what's required from you at this point? A couple of things. Uh, mainly rest assured, rest assured that we are not going away. We're coming back and we're making a historical 
come back. And things are going to be more visible to you. So you're going to see it. We're not going to talk about it, right? And then I like your input to share the buzz and to share the excitement and to express how good is what we have. I already know that. Done. But I want you to see it with your, it, it's, it's literally, it's going to make you speechless. So, uh, so rest assured. And second thing is, please, if you believe in this concept and this journey, stick around, stay close. The coming days are crucial as we transition to a new height. Okay, so if you care about this, stay close, okay, uh, and make sure you uh, pay attention to every update, every chance we get to meet. Third thing is potentially next week or within the next days, okay, not like I don't want to say a month, but let's say less than half a month, all right? Within the next days, uh, what's the day? 24. Let's say by the first week of October, okay? Yes. It is reasonable to expect some critical updates about the current situation of Unpasso. And the last thing I want to mention right now is to give you a little bit of clarification about the next phase of Unpasso. What do we mean the next phase of Unpasso? So the evolution started as the following. Number one, we had an Excel sheet. That's where we were preparing the business. So when we have a business, basically a website or a back office, we feed it there, all right, manual. Then our business grew faster than we thought, much bigger than we thought. So we created uh, Go Founders. That was uh, December, 2018. And that was not in the benefits or the promises of O founders now, Go founders uh, previously. It was not um, one of the requirements. We just decided to uh, make it happen because we decided to go to a higher level of the products, uh, do it all in one platform. So it's going to take longer and uh, we're we're gonna do it all in house because of that, and there's a high demand on the founder's position. We did not want to shut down that ability and not to be consumed energy wise uh, and efforts and and time just by catering to the founders and you know the 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 volume that's coming in uh, at records we've never seen before truly in any company. And and the the globality of, of what we had is really uh, the definition of a global business. We touched every corner of the planet, literally. So then we wanted to automate the process so people would have a link. We don't need to be involved in, in, um, in, in the transaction of somebody joining or offering them. We had... Uh, videos, pages to share, and people would just come and register. And then we had uh, uh, webinars regularly, all of that presenting the business while we were building, staffing, opening offices, licensing, all of that. So we can, now we decided to do it in-house. And then, as you know, we started expanding the scope of uh, scope of our products instead of like integrating something third party uh, party or um, like uh, outsource or something, we did it in-house. Now we, uh, we've we attracted more people that they were uh, impressed about the concept. 
so our foundership grew more. And later we uh, changed it to O Founders. So it goes with the theme. And after the name became known, uh, which is on passive. So Excel sheet, no employees, um, no company technically to where we had a business name, platform, employees, engineers, everything is being done in house. Lots of challenges, uh, inaccuracy about the timeline. Uh, people probably were not to the level, uh, I'm talking about technologically, not aligning with the vision. So in their eyes, I don't know if it's just telling me the timelines or that's what they think, because uh, I'm, I'm aiming for something super giant and they're probably doing something as like a tiny, tiny uh, application. Uh, so there was a gap, okay, between the vision and the uh, timeline and the, the accomplishment. But make no mistake, there was a lot of work done. And then when we became this big and we've expanded internationally and became known uh, in many countries, uh, things, you know, took a different height, multiple applications, different departments, all of that. And with that, it was a, a chaotic situation was created, which is uh, getting off track, you know, with volume, we've hired the wrong people, et cetera, all of that. But we realized that was not exactly what we've envisioned time-wise quality nor um uh, the, the you know the the overall accomplishment so earlier this year you probably know a couple of months ago there was a major breakdown okay that forced us to question everything even from the beginning, and evaluate. So we knew that it's not going to work to continue on the same track, on the same track or on the same, uh, say, uh, uh, you know, pace or momentum. It's not going to work. Okay. Different departments were just hitting in the wrong direction or the opposite direction and all of that, whether intentional or unintentional, just the way they thought it is. So all in all, uh, when that happened, we were forced to stop, literally stop the ship and, and, and reflect which direction we want to move on to. Now, I, I, I want to remind you, even from the early days of Unpassive, we said this is only one phase. There are more to come. And we started with Unpassive as the foundation of to where we want to build other avenues of life. When we decided we're going to stop, reflect, evaluate, and see how we're going to proceed and move ahead, of course, not in a million year, it would occur to us, like, let's give up or quit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do we move ahead, which way. All right. So fortunately, this very conversation, I've had it with a different perspective with other qualified experts. How do you move ahead? This is what happened. This is our journey. This is what happened. This is where we are. And this is my vision where we want to go. That story was so inspiring to attract enough people, enough talent, as I said previously, to take us to where we want to go. 
selectively, not like random staffing, all of that. Uh, so we're just about done or wrapping up the phase of Unpassive as you know it. Now, not only we're going on the right track with the right pace, with the right talent and, and all of that and character, most importantly, but we're going to the next level, next upper level of Unpassive. And it's definitely exciting to share all those uh, updates with you as we progress. So that's why you really need to stay close in the coming days as we unveil all those uh, uh, developments and uh, not so much about the past, but we're going to focus on what's coming. It's all perfect, in my opinion. It's all good. It couldn't be any better. In my, in my humble estimate, it's a lot better than we thought. Personally, I see it because I, I think there's a force that took us to, to have this plummet, if you wish, in the last few months or so, that will make us reevaluate everything. So we make sure failure is not an option. We make no mistake. And this time, we've got to crush it. We've got to nail it. And I, I think now I already have the evidence that we're capable of doing that. So I'm going to do what Red Redfern does. Okay, I'm going to recap in a more coherent way. And then he will do it in a more professional way. But I'm just going to try to give you the extract of what I said. Uh, we are coming back very soon to reopen on passive as it is, at least to see your business is intact. Everything where it's supposed to be. That's one thing. By tomorrow, we will know if we're going to internally. I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to share this with you, possibly, but but at least we will know if it's going to be a pre a brief uh, transition between what we have now to the next phase of Unpassive. Or we kind of like make a wrap-up closure to the current phase of Unpassive, sharing more details with you and giving you more light on what's coming ahead on the next chapter. Okay? I hope that makes sense. So the evolution is going up. We secured the recovery. Now we're going up. That's all I wanted to say for now. And I'm sorry for whatever is happening at the DeGarmo's home, but uh, we, will, uh, we will get through this, okay, no matter what. Thank you, okay. brother. Uh, so that's been said. I want to see uh, sometime today, maybe we will uh, circle back with uh, with our leaders to, uh, I'm talking about yourself. If it's possible today, we can try that, okay? So we can start brainstorming about which is more preferred scenario. Reopen, move directly to the next phase, or reopen, do the preparation and the wrap up of what we have, and move on to the next. All right. I hope I made it uh, understandable. Perfectly. Yeah. Thank you. Perfectly, brother. I can see I, it I appreciate in your it. face, man. I can see the excitement. I you're moving around like me on a crazy live. Uh, I definitely can see the excitement in your face. Uh, Except the look. Yeah. <laughs> Not like you. Yeah, maybe I have the gestures, but uh, I still have way to go. Yeah. I'm glad you're happy, man. Working man. on it. Yeah. yeah. You look really good, too, man. You are you came out with just 
this intense excitement I'd never seen before, actually. And you blew it out of the park. So I think all these founders out there, pay attention. Don't sway from what he said. Stay close. Uh, What I think he just said was amazing. And get ready, guys, because things are coming your way. Absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. Right. Uh, <laughs> He's so excited. Let, let the fun begin. Okay. <laughs> Have a good Cheers, one. Have a good one. Thanks for coming out, Ash. Appreciate you, brother. Of course. Give the family our love. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. He was he was making me nervous. He was so intense. That was pretty good. Yeah, well, Marty, I know Marty's still on here. Uh, I know Marty uh, was listening to all this, but I'm sure he's going to call me in a couple minutes and we'll fill him in, but I'm sure he heard of it. So, hey, guys, that's live. Uh, Marty has a lot of kids in that house, and sometimes things happen where you just got to leave, and we all – we all know that. We all take care of each other. So, founders, you heard what the man said. Stay close for the next few days. Pay attention. Check out our YouTubes because we don't know if he's coming on. We never know when. He usually tells us at the last minute. So, just pay attention. It's all happening. Guys. It's all happening. Okay, guys, that's it from us. Wrapping it up now. And we'll be back very shortly. Good news all around. Bye for now.